Welcome back to Talk To Me with the coach, Mike, we made this. We're on the road once again, taking you youngsters behind the scenes on what it's like being a major league ball player and introduce you to the stars of the game. I'm going to let him introduce himself to you. Oh, I'm Mike Clevenger. That's the only, that's the only <laughs> intro they get, boy. I'm a starting pitcher for the <laughs> Chicago White Sox. <laughs> All right, so, you know, every kid dream of playing big leagues. You in the big leagues. When I was scouting, I always told my guys, the quickest way to the big leagues, pitching the catch. Clevenger is a pitcher in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was your role like getting here? I, mean, I kind of did everything coming up. I mean, I played a bunch of different sports, skateboarded. Uh, Played, I played the field even uh, up through college. I think uh, I tried to hold on to that dream as long as I could until uh, it kind of forced my own hand onto the mound. Oh, wait a minute. I heard guys say they play football, basketball. You're the first one I heard say skateboarding. Oh, yeah. No, I played uh, basketball, soccer, skateboarding. Yeah. Oh, so you're one of the multi-talented athletes, huh? Oh, I like to do anything that was competitive. Yeah. So you, you, you grew up in Florida. Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So what was your, your, your youth days like in baseball? What was high school like? Oh, it was trying times. <laughs> no, but uh, it, I mean, just as far as playing wise, it was, uh, you know, really just kind of learning and understanding the game, trying to, you know, do out there. It went from, you know, playing to really trying to like, you know, discover the art of baseball and like why, like, you know, why you do certain things, why you throw certain pitches, why you, uh, you know, work a certain way. So what was your velocity like in high school? Oh, uh, I'd probably say my freshman year, I was like 84, 80, bumped up, was like touching 88, maybe just sniffing 90. Junior year is when I kind of saw the low 90s, uh, still like, you know, 90 to 93. And then around senior year, I was touching 95, 96. High school? Yeah. Mm. What was you at when I was scouting? <laughs> <laughs> That's called beast mode out there. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. You was the man. Couldn't nobody hit you then in high school. Oh, no, I did, I did pretty well in high school. I mean, no hitters you do. <laughs> oh, in high school? Uh, just a couple in summer ball. I don't think I ever threw any in uh, actual hot, like my high school game. I was see in Chicago at 84, 85, you above average pitcher. You ain't nobody <laughs> go hit you. Yeah. No, we had a crazy game. I threw all 13 innings of a division, like district championship game. I uh, threw 13 innings. I think it was 137 pitches. One hit. <laughs> So wait a minute, back there I had some pitches that we call had the rubber band arm. They could do that and come back and pitch. Did you have that rubber band arm or you uh, need four thought, or five days off? No, I thought I did until I, it kind of caught up to me with two Tommy John surgeries later on in life. It, it'll do that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you made that transition from high school. What was college mm -hmm. ball like? Uh, I went to the Citadel first freshman year and that was uh, kind of more my parents' decision than mine, but it was a pretty strict military college. So I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I went there for a, a year, and then halfway through my sophomore year, you know, after talking to scouts and other people, I they were always advised it'd probably be a better route for me to just go to junior college, get drafted a year earlier, versus wait until I was a junior at the Citadel to get drafted. So I kind of disenrolled myself and chased my dream down the down 95, went down to South Florida to junior college, and then once I got past Jacksonville from Charleston, is when I called my parents and told them I wasn't at the Citadel anymore. <laughs> what a not, surprise that was. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, high school, college ball, you're throwing upper 80s, 90s. You yeah. had to have scouts all around you. Yeah, I mean, started really picking up that sophomore year. I don't think I picked up a ball with other being, you know, 30, 40 scouts, you know, watching the bullpen or in the stands. Man, you was the man, huh? Uh, so, I what round was you drafted in? Uh, fourth round. Fourth round? Mm hmm. You remember the scout that drafted you? Oh, Tom Cotchman. You keep in touch with him now? I uh, haven't talked to him in a minute. It's been a see, while. See, I'm putting a plug in for a scout. See, not <laughs> yeah. before, but scout. You ain't talked to him. Yeah. He's supposed to get a Christmas present every year. <laughs> yeah. Tom, I'm working for you here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you got drafted and you went off to the minor leagues. I mean, mm. every kid think you guys get drafted you in the big leagues the next day. I'm sure that minor league experience was an oh. eye-open experience. No, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, well, I went and played in Cape Cod after I was drafted. Did like an abnormal route while we negotiated a little longer. Mm -hmm. And then when, uh, when I signed, they were in, I think, Billings, Mon uh, Montana, somewhere in Montana. Mm -hmm. I had to fly out to the middle of nowhere in Montana. And it was uh, pretty eye-opening. Long way <laughs> from the big leagues. Yeah, it was not the, that was not the big leagues. So when you start, started your tour of the minor leagues and you saw that you was going to make it to the big leagues, I mean, what, what mindset did you take on? Oh, I mean, I just started realizing it's not, you were kind of in a fishbowl, even no matter how good competition was in, in Florida, 
it was still a fishbowl. Like, I mean, I could be the best guy in my district. I could be one of the best guys in Florida, but that was nothing compared to, like, you know, guys from all over the world that are coming and chasing this dream. So it really started to put things in perspective of, you know, everyone at that level is, you know, good enough. It has somewhat of some kind of tools to get there. Whether they, whether they range, are still pretty close. So it's going to be how you separate yourself with the work you do and, you know, how much you're committing to it. So as a pitcher, how do you deal with the up and down mental part of the game? Oof, I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, I mean, it's you know, everyone says don't get too high, don't get too low. I feel like that's part of the game. That's part of why I love it. Is uh, you know, I'll I'll get really high. It's just about how quick can you shut it off and move on to the next pitch. I don't think it's one to, at least I'm not one. I try to control my emotions for a while and try to bottle it up. I think that was way worse. So I think kind of letting some emotion out, but realizing like you know, can't be a child about it. And you know, after the next pitch, after the next, you know, get back out there for the next inning. It's a brand new ball game. All right, let me give you these last two questions. I know you got to get ready for the ball game. Who are some of the guys in the big leagues that you idolized along the way? Oh, when I was coming up or, like, when I was young? Oh, uh, I mean, I was always a really big fan of uh, Cal Ripken, big fan of Pedro Martinez, and uh, Doc Ellis. He's also one of my one of my guys. So you're naming all the heavyweights. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you get that call up, you're going to the big leagues, walking in the locker room for the very first time. What was that feeling like? Oh, I was ner <laughs> really nervous, especially back back then. It was a little, a little different than it is now. Uh, a little bit less accepting <laughs> of young guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I, I barely slept, but I felt like I didn't even need sleep that first month I was in the big leagues. I just felt like everything was going a million miles an hour. And then, uh, you know, before my first start, I was, you know, I was, on the bathroom floor puking for 30 minutes in the stall with my cleats and uniform on they had to come get me and ask if I was going to be able to pitch I was like yeah I'll be out there <laughs> so you were just overwhelmed huh oh definitely definitely priceless Kodak moment yeah 100% all right did you cry oh yeah of course of course oh, when I got the crying. call probably got somebody yeah. bit they cried oh did mama cry <laughs> yeah yeah she oh did. yeah I know mama cried yeah coach tell you y'all is behind the scenes with the man and I must say a class act with the coach and we got the same name, Mike and Mike, <laughs> Clevenger. All right, appreciate it. Thanks a lot.